Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may acknowledge your goodness, give thanks for all your benefits, and serve you with willing obedience all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. God, not 
You see that oftentimes what was on their hearts was not all that good. Grappled them, swallowed a bunch of them up. Snakes came and bit them. They were griping and complaining against the Lord and Moses. They had to turn back because they didn't trust God's word in the beginning to go in and take the land, so they had to wander around for 40 years. Nevertheless, during this whole time, the Lord did take care of them. They didn't care. Why would this suck? They got tired of man. God sent them quail. Sent them so much quail, they got sick of quail. I like kids when they get too much candy on Halloween. They eat all of the Halloween candy. Nevertheless, God, and then they learn how to give Moses and Moses. And God did this to show them the cruelty of man who live on bread alone. Every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Their clothes didn't wear out, their shoes didn't wear out. How can you some of those? God supernaturally sustained their clothes. He supernaturally sustained their shoes. He supernaturally provided them with food. Because it is his word that brings it all about anyway. There is nothing that we have that does not come forth from the very mouth of God. He speaks it all into existence, even if he generally goes in the ground with the natural, wrong way about to do it. Now, why? You know, he rains and makes vines grow, and he goes to harvest the vines, he'll take care of the vines, push the grapes and all that, let it sit for a while, and get wine. Bread doesn't magically appear on the table. Giving him the talents and the abilities necessary to provide those things. And the Lord is sending them into a great land. It may not look too hot these days, but then in the last several thousand years, they've been warring on it and tearing it up and whatnot. I'm not trying to criticize them for a little bit. But what kind of land did God give them? What, what were they going into? He says, a good land, and of brooks of water, of fountains and springs flowing out in the valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, <coughs> of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey, a land in which you will eat bread without scarcity, which will lack nothing, a land of stones of iron and a few sills of wood and copper. That's what they got. In fact, when they went into the land, not only that, the Lord put all of those people who were there before them into their hands. They didn't have to build anything. They could fill their body. God did preach to them for several hundred years to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to repent of their sins, and they didn't. The Israelites said the angels would come on the last day. God did vengeance upon them. And so they had cities already ready to go. Fields already in there. Olive orchards. Grapevines. Land was tilled. Already weeded. Nothing was there. The Lord did them. And thinking of that, what kind of land has the Lord given us? This great, vast. See to the other end of the sea. Even in the, the tropics, the Pacific, the Caribbean, the islands. Good. 
breadbasket of the world. Indeed, we have what's a little iron, copper, tin, lead, you name it, oxygen, radium. We really don't need anything else from anybody else. We all got it here. We just don't like to do it very much. We got it. Keep providing it for us. Lord provided the bread. He provides the cup of tea. We should remember it is the Lord that provided for us. It is He who gives you strength, skills, gifts, talents, and abilities for you to earn your daily bread. Sometimes even provide for others. If you look at our you know, intro for today, if you ever look at your catechism, most of you probably just pray, give them, come Lord Jesus, be your Lord. That's what it says. You know how it is like when we have our potlucks, I like to go to the catechism. The eyes of all, actually, I'm just bread. The eyes of all look to you, Lord, and you give them their food in due season. You open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. We say the Lord's Prayer. We say, God, the Lord gives thy gifts, we're bound to receive. The bounty of Christ our Lord. Amen. But then indeed it is the bounty of Christ our Lord that we receive all these gifts. And these thy gifts. It's from him. All the world out there, you know. The groundhog who lives next door, he looks up the perfect garden, looks up the guy, and goes, Thank the Lord. And he goes and eats all my vegetables. Two sure squirrels gave thanks to the Lord for all the tomatoes they ate while I was on vacation. And I give thanks to the Lord, like, it's beautiful. I don't, I don't know what happened, but none of the animals liked the fresh. I got a few of those. Max and Lee's making pumpkin pie. But all that is from the Lord. It is He who opens His hands and makes the crops grow, and makes the harvest bountiful. He who helps us to have our jobs and to make our jobs productive. Do something good for society that's worth something. We can exchange that for our daily bread. What a wonderful thing. What a wonderful thing. We should lack nothing in our country. As the Lord says, those who have much will share with those who have little. That's his plan. If you see somebody who's lacking, you need that extra. So no one's ever lacking anything, and all people always everywhere can give thanks unto the Lord our God. The Lord says to the Israelites, and you shall eat and be full, and you shall bless the Lord your God for all the good land that he has given you. Probably tomorrow, at three o'clock, you will all be full. Some earlier, some later. You probably want to fall asleep and you keep saying over those <laughs> about four o'clock. And you'll stop when you go and nothing else will be there. And hopefully, as you gather together, as you were getting full, and maybe before you get full, you will look up into the sky and the ceiling of your house and give thanks to the Lord. And eat for all our meals, all the time, everywhere. We should recognize whom do we receive the gifts of our Lord? Who provided the strength to work, the mind to think, the opportunity to grow our wealth? Is it not the Lord? Whatever it is that we have in front of us, 
we should bless them. And on top of all this, in this magnificent land that we live in, even with all of its troubles, magnificent it is, there is some place better. The promised land that God had promised the Israelites, the land that he had promised to Abraham, Author of Hebrews tells us, I'm not talking about that piece of land over there. Yeah, you can have that. But he was looking to a new heavens and a new earth where righteousness reigns. A new promised land. New heavens and a new earth where righteousness reigns. We enter there again, not by our might. Can't earn it just as we didn't earn this great land. We were born in it and we gifted it. In our own lives and also God was working through them to take us here. This promised land, not the United States, the world to come, the age to come. He has promised to give us. We'll say to Jesus. To him, most of all, we give thanks. And indeed, as we come up and receive the Lord's Supper, you know, we, we call it the Eucharist. And as we give thanks, we give thanks to God for all his goodness to us in Jesus. He went to the cross, gave up his life, shed his blood, made atonement for all of our sin. And all, I mean, all of them. None accepted, none too small. For you. None too big for him to give, and none too, in the, too, too much in the middle to be given. All of them. Because he wants to bless us all. Or, here's the lesson said he wants all men to come to the knowledge of the truth and be saved. And receiving the knowledge of that truth and being saved from that truth, we give thanks. Bless his holy name. Amen. May the peace of God, which beyond all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. <laughs> Sins and does not deal with us according to our iniquities. 
as high as the heaven is above the earth, so great is thy mercy toward us. When we beseech thee, give us truly thankful hearts, that we may not forget all thy benefits and thy never failing mercies. Enable us to realize thy goodness should not lead us nor bold people to repentance, and that we are not worthy the least of all thy mercy. And above all thy truth, because thou hast repaid thy manifold bounties with all manner of sin and unrighteousness, and can be deserved. Thou shouldst cause thy loving kindness altogether to cease among us. As thou hast delivered up thine only begotten Son for us all, and with him also freely give us all things, we have bestowed thy abundant blessing upon our land as governments and inhabitants, that all men may seek and find thee in this acceptable time and the day of salvation. Do not thou forsake us. That is for his sake, be gracious unto us forevermore. With the favor of thy Holy Spirit, write in our hearts with Remembrance of thy faithfulness. Open thou our lips that we may praise thy grace and mercy and confess thy name and word. And as thou hast promised with us in earthly goods, make us willing and ready to praise thee by our works and to honor thee of our substance for the extension of thy kingdom. Let this mind be in us, which also is in Christ Jesus, that we have compassion on our neighbor in his need, even as thou hast had pity on us. Preserve us from vanity and presumption, lest we stray. Our power and might of our hands have gotten us this wealth, but let us remember thee, the Lord, our God, by whose power and benediction the beloved church, our country, and government are preserved. To the end that we may inculcate upon our children and our children's children for our memorial forever. God has done great things for us, and we rejoice in thee. Our soul shall bless thee at all times and shall never forget all thy benefits. Let us walk in thy ways. We shall glorify thee and exalt thy name in the new Jerusalem. Through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, our Lord. Amen.
This cup is the testament of my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you all.
May glory and God give mercy. He would strengthen us the same in faith toward you and in firm love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Say. 